Good evening. We come here on this Thursday night as part of Holy Week and our preparations uh, as Christians and people of faith in the church for Easter Sunday. Uh, just a couple of announcements for us and for tonight that on Easter Sunday, this Sunday morning, 7 o'clock, we'll have an outdoor sunrise service. We'll be at seven, meeting at 7 o'clock on the south part of the church out there to see the sunrise and we're praying there will be a sunrise Sunday morning but we'll gather anyway you'll need to bring your own chair and we'll have a worship service 7 a.m. outdoor sunrise service on Sunday morning right after that at 8 o'clock there'll be a drive up and walk up uh, Easter pancake breakfast five dollars a plate and for those who are attending at 7, they'll bring the food to you if you want to purchase uh, your Easter pancake breakfast. Or you can just drive up at uh, 8 o'clock and take it. We can't seat anyone inside yet for the meal, but you can come and take it with you. Hope you will do that Sunday morning. And at 10 o'clock a.m., uh, both in person and online, uh, we will have uh, our Easter celebration service, 10 o'clock right here in the church. The 7 o'clock service is in person only, not online, but we'll uh, have both at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Tonight we gather here as a church and we remember. We remember the Thursday that Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room after a very tumultuous week there in Jerusalem in which he would now spend time in praying for them and the disciples and later on in the Garden of Gethsemane praying before later in that night he would be betrayed and arrested by the temple guards and then put on trial. It's called Monday Thursday, and Monday is a word, it comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means a mandate, and it comes from a new commandment Jesus gives to his disciples that night as they were there in the upper room. A new commandment I give you, Jesus says, that you love one another. That's it. That was the command that you love one another. So we come now to remember and to love and we share now in the experience of that time of coming to the table ourselves and experiencing now that journey of Christ that will lead them to the cross on that very next day. And now if you'll stand with me, those who are here and if those who are home, we'll have our call to worship together. We are Jesus' disciples, following him even as he moves toward the cross. Even as he wraps a towel around his waist. Even as he kneels to wash the filth from the feet of his friends. We are Jesus' disciples, longing to be faithful even as the night grows dark. Even as betrayers loom. Even as the powers that oppose the way of Christ press in around us. We are Jesus' disciples, struggling to love others even as Jesus loved us. We are Jesus' Jesus disciples, disciples, gathered, gathered here, here to, to worship, worship God, God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our hymn of worship, God of grace and God of glory.
as we now approach the table of grace for our time of communion, please join me now in our prayer of confession. God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost. Jesus, Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Merciful God, we confess that so often our discipleship has been weak when we have failed to serve as Jesus served. Forgive us. When we have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us. Forgive us. When we have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Jesus with our lips and then denied him by our actions. Forgive us. Merciful God, empower, empower us, us by, by your, your spirit, spirit to, to be steady, steady and, and true to you in every, every time, time of trial. trial. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare for our time of communion, you may be seated. The Upper Room. This night we return to an upper room when Jesus gathered with his disciples to celebrate the Passover and to share a meal of remembrance. Jesus begins this time by washing the feet of the disciples as an act of love and servant leadership. Jesus tells his disciples that he is with them only a short time longer and that they cannot go with him. Jesus gives them a new mandate, a commandment, to love one another. Just as he has loved them, they must now love one another too. Jesus says this is how everyone will recognize them and his disciples when they see the love they have for each other. Let us prepare to join those first disciples and the church of all times and places to know Christ anew in the breaking of the bread and by singing and reflecting on the beautiful song. In remembrance of me.
Join me in our sacramental Holy Communion as we prepare. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then Jesus took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us here in person and those at home. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this greater table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the Christ in our midst and in each other. Amen. During that time that Jesus was with the twelve in the upper room, they had time of prayer and Jesus teaching them about the kingdom. They came to a place in the meal and Jesus took the bread. The bread was the most common of the elements that the people would have to eat. They would share every time a meal together. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it like he had done many times before, even when feeding of the 5,000. And he said to them, this, this is my body, which will be broken for you. And then Jesus took the cup, the wine that was the common drink for them as well at the meal. He blessed it, he poured it in the cup, and then he gave it then to the disciples. And he said to them, this, this will be as my blood shed for you and for the world. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ and his great faith and his great commitment to love of his disciples and of your love to the world. As now we share and remember of these elements that we have for our sacrament of communion, let us always be faithful to that great witness and story of Jesus and your love. In Christ we pray, amen. So now you may take the bread, eat and remember. And then taking the cup. Take, drink, and remember. And by doing so, as the Apostle Paul says, may we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. A place to pray. Jesus and the disciples leave the upper room, walking towards the area known as Gethsemane. 
Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him into a place surrounded by olive trees. Jesus is filled with sadness and tells them he feels bad enough to die at that very moment. He asked them to stay and to keep watch with him. He told them, I feel so bad. He goes a little bit further to talk to God, his father. Jesus pleads with God that God would not ask him to take a path through darkness and agonized suffering. Jesus was utterly alone. Those whom he wanted to be with him, to pray with him, did not understand. Jesus wanted to prepare them for what they would later face. They slept while he prayed, wept and sweated drops like blood. Jesus knew agony, torment, despair, the ultimate dark night of the soul of mind and body. Jesus begged God to stop it all, to take the cup away from him, and then he said to God, your will, not mine, be done. Reflect on what Jesus must have experienced in the garden. What would you wish to say, to do, to ease his anguish? or simply to be with him in his pain. Take a few moments to think and pray about the things that worry you and the situations that make you fear about what will happen next in your life. Now you can remain seated and we're going to sing together Sweet Hour of Prayer. After the time of prayer, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and with disciples, and they moved to the Mount of Olives and the arrest. Jesus was arrested and taken before the religious leaders. One of his disciples, Judas, had led the temple guards to Jesus. He was paid money to betray his friend. And Jesus was, by most of his disciples during this time, and during this night, the religious leaders used their power to unjustly to detain and question Jesus. But they were unable, 
unwilling to listen to the truth spoken by Jesus. The one who was innocent was made to be guilty. The one sinned against was the one to be punished. Reflect on Jesus standing alone now before his accusers. See his courage and his strength. Have you ever been falsely accused and no one spoke up for you? Have you been treated unfairly by those who could have used their power for better purposes? During the night, Jesus faced brutality. The men who were guarding Jesus made fun of him and beat him. They blindfolded Jesus and said, Prove that you are a prophet and tell us who hit you. There was no, nothing. There was no one to stop him from being treated badly. Because people had the freedom to hurt Jesus, they did. They knew they could get away with it. They were afraid and ignorant of who Jesus was. Reflect on what you know of Jesus' suffering, the physical, emotional abuse heaped upon him even before the sentence was passed. Remember, Jesus was both divine and human. Consider his human feelings of helplessness, pain, humiliation, fear of what was yet to come. And at the same time, reflect on the love he had for those who were causing his suffering. Now from that time in Jerusalem with the religious leaders, now is the road to the cross. On Friday, Jesus stood before the governor, Pilate, when given the choice between Jesus and a known criminal, the crowd shouted for Jesus to be put to death. Pilate ordered for the Roman soldiers to beat Jesus. The soldiers took a crown of sharp thorns and pressed it into his head. They also dressed Jesus in a purple robe and made fun of him by calling him the king of the Jews. And Pilate sentenced him to death by crucifixion, a cruel and torturous death. Jesus was treated as a traitor to his religion and to the Roman government. Jesus then was made to carry his own cross through the city streets to a hill outside the city at some point along the way, the Roman soldiers forced a man in the crowd, Simon of Cyrene, to carry his cross. Along the way, people yelled and cried, or they laughed or stared at Jesus in silent belief. Reflect on what it must have been like for Jesus to be tortured and humiliated. Reflect on how Jesus accepted the cross with no words of complaint, no protest of innocence, and no cursing the injustice. Think about the man, Simon, forced to carry and what that would have been like, this cross, to be asked to carry the cross of a man sentenced to death. And now remember how Jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him. Sacrificial love. 
Once Jesus reached the hill outside the city, the Roman soldiers placed him on the cross and drove heavy, square, wrought iron nails through his wrist and deep into the wood. His feet were placed together and nailed into the cross. The cross was then lifted up next to two nameless men. We only catch a glimpse of them at this point. The worst possible moment. One joins the crowd and insults and mocks Jesus. The other seeks peace even in the midst of agony. From the cross, Jesus speaks words of love and forgiveness. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Reflect on how Jesus taught us all to love our enemies and to forgive others. Here at the cross, Jesus goes beyond words and ideals and teaches us an example with nails digging into his flesh and the excruciating pain, he offers us forgiveness. He shows us love. Let us sing together, what wondrous love is this? It is finished. Jesus, knowing that everything now had been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to his lips. When Jesus had re received the drink, he said, It is is finished. With that, Jesus bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Spend some time imagining you are standing in front of the cross with the other witnesses. Mary, his mother, Salome, Mary Magdalene, and John. Can you feel the presence of death? Can you feel the heaviness of despair? 
Can you feel the sorrow, emptiness, and confusion? Can you feel the darkness? Air. We hope for the dawning of a new day. We hope for God to bring newness out of endings. We are already people of the resurrection. Yet it is important for us to remember what Jesus experienced. It was an agonizing end, brutal, cruel, and violent. The cross is a powerful symbol. It represents the pain of sacrifice and of being abandoned. However, through Jesus, the cross also brings us God's forgiveness, restoration, transformation, and hope. We will indeed celebrate the gift of new life this Sunday on Resurrection Day. O oh Lord, we cannot comprehend the depth and breadth of your love. There are not enough words in all languages together to describe what your love means to us. May our love for you and our love for all of your children in some way reflect your love. Let this dark night become a fertile soil for growth in your love and your, in our growth in the community of faith. May you use this night to teach us how to love you and to love others the way that you have loved us. O oh Lord, we long for newness, for hope, for renewal, for life where there is now death. Out of this darkness, bring to us the light of a new dawn. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. We hope in you and trust in your mercy. Amen. Amen. 